Okay, you wanna clear out the safe or what? Yeah, where do I meet you? Room 505 on the penthouse floor. Come rendezvous with me there and I will take you to the vault. Suddenly wet hat. Maybe we can hire him. <coughs> <coughs> I'm thinking of ditching Dietrich if I ever get a decker. Because A, we don't need two shamans. B, Dietrich only has his throwing knife ability. That's not really good. Psst, over here, buddy. I knew you would come. I've always been good a good judge of character. Since you are meeting in person, I formally introduce myself. He nods his head in salute. Blitz, Decker Extraordinaire, at your service. A runaway. The wall is just around the corner. Once we've get there, I can unlock it with a few clicks on the keyboard. Blitz offers you something between a smile and a smirk. Built myself a backdoor when I bought the security system. Never hurts to be careful. Sounds good, let's go. Open the vault. I think I was safe before I opened the vault. Holy fuck. So, Dietrich. <laughs> I became a vault. Yeah, suddenly. Seems like a nice job opening. Spray and pray. Let's put a Dragon Slayer idol down, so in case they throw us a grenade or so, we are prepared. Iga! Shoot him in the face! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Glory! Lady! You know no pain! Uh, you have no mercy! Weapons. Flanked damage. The best kind of damage. Yeah, I'll let you guys all in the back for now. Maybe because I have only two places where I can hide. Oh well, let's go. Yes! BAM! You stole my thunder, Chloe. I can run up here. <laughs> we know how to build bunkers. I do have to wonder why... The sniper gun is worse at hitting than uh, uh, the shotgun. Oh well. Uh, there's nothing to hide behind. I don't know. Never played by the fire scene. Bam! Fuck that guy up! Good! So I wanted to save. But I saved the sorry. I can't save. Great. Alright, here we go. Tap a tap tap. Done! 
Wait, when did that get thing get installed? Take over! Ow! Hey! Dietrich, can you fix me up, please? Thanks a lot. A steel links drone. I have no idea what it is, but it seems to be dangerous. What is this? I can summon a spirit here. Would be a bad idea. Okay, you go in and use this thing, please. Ah. Well, sucks to be him, I guess. Enrage Troll. This troll! Well, I won't, don't want to be in this guy's shoes. Okay, I have an angry troll who wants to fuck up Dietrich, but... <laughs> the next decker gets fired. Uh, I could hit the troll. Wow. And then run away. Nice crit. Lowest movement, and you get your ass out of there. Great. Hey, how can you still move? You shouldn't be able to move. Circle. That can hit me. No. Iger would never hit me. <laughs> okay, that wall is down. Let's heal our wall. Put on the Dragon Slayer. Oh, it's lost the movement range. Really? I thought it attack points. Whoopsie daisy. I read that wrong. You can reload. And then we end the turn. So the target's movement for two rounds. Fuck. Not enough ammo. Then reload. Yes, reload for one. The troll could have attacked me there. That's true. Now we just have to get rid of this automatic shooty shooty thingy thingy. That sounds like fun. The turn. Uh, how about I summon a spirit? That sounds like a great idea. You move in. 
I'm sure that is. Wait. Aiga, you move in. I move in. Let's hope for the best. Good. I summon the spirit of acid. Yeah, you can eat this bullet there. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Optional loot the vault. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Send this to my stash. Confirm. All I can do is seem to have in place. Take the drone. Take it with me. A drug formula. Jazz. One thousand four hundred sixty million. Karma gate. Great. Um, couldn't I let's use our new buddy here? Oh, I can open this door now. A drone repair kit. I mean, I can sell it if I don't need it. So I highly I don't really see myself using drones or anyone who uses drones, to be quite honest. Nothing here to use? Okay. Safe unlocked. Nice. Ah! I need a data check for this. An Airbus Classic, considered the premier heavy pistol in the streets. That's a smart link system for increased accuracy. Oh, would be something for Gloria? I don't think there's a data link. So, anything else I needed some decker for? Not really. Okay. Let's leave this place. <clears throat> uh, Let's give her some drugs. Uh, put the drugs away. So have them anymore too bad for doom i think i take a quick break <laughs> need to need to get my something to drink i will be right back
Oh, oh, I forgot to put up the be right back picture. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I napped too long. <laughs> Hi Will, you didn't miss too much. I think I should be at the same part where I laughed where the last time. So we just did the first bigger mission after the intro. We did everything, everything optional and yeah. Let's leave. Hey, thanks for the assist. Can't tell you how happy I am to leave this place. Happy to help, it must have been terrible to stuck in there. Well, it was a picnic. I'll tell you that much. Say, you wouldn't happen to need a Nova Hot Decker, would you? Cause I suddenly find myself unemployed. As it happens, we could use a Decker, yes. Excellent, fantastic, I promise you won't regret it. Blitz has joined your team. Great. If they give you something to watch at work tomorrow, it's Sunday tomorrow. I hope you're not like some some uh, brain surgeon, like <laughs> in the middle of an operation, <laughs> watching my my stream and doing, <laughs> oh, this guy won't ever feel happiness anymore. <laughs> Too bad for him. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy, I cut the wrong end there. Cool advancement available. As you lead the team through the shadows, your companions will continue to develop and learn new combat skills. Clicking the icon in the lower right hand corner of the screen will open a cool advancement menu. When this icon is highlighted, one or two of your companions will to learn new combat skills. At each advancement level, you may choose one or two possible combat skills for each one. Choose wisely. Okay. Sniper specialist or shotgun specialist? Hmm. Increases accuracy by for one shot. I don't know. I think I would keep her as a more upfront kind of person, since most of my people are kind of need to be upfront about it. <laughs> Shotgun ammo mod. Huntress. Sharpshooter. <laughs> Speed loader. It's a bit of a target. Two enemies in one action. That's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Uh, maybe I will make a sniper specialist so she can stay in the back. Though I don't know how often you have uh, shotgun. Fuck it. So. Can you level up again? No. Okay. Uh, meltdown, augment spell, electro core, blade specialist, creature skills, thrown weapons. Yeah, I won't use it for much, anyways. Compound attack. This is up to one armor. May do AP damage. Wow. I kinda like her up front to be quite honest. The pistol special is not bad too. Well, I think I take the pistol. Yeah, I need the pistol. Confirm all. And you're just useless. Okay. Well, we got us a new decker. Kami, you're new here. <clears throat> ah, she's the, uh, the the one daughter there. She tips an invisible hat. Hey there, remember me from the cafe? Name's Kami. Are you looking for something? Well, who are you for one thing? 
I'm all took ears and hands out of the cafe. Call me Kami. I wear a couple hats, a barista, a gopher. Keep my eyes and ears open. Let's just say I get on by trading stories. So I can count on you to hear what's going on. Like I said, only if you got something juicy for me, or if Aldrich wants me to tell you something, what well, that's well. And maybe he sees in hands, but he's got enough of a voice all by himself. He doesn't seem to be afraid to use it either. You know the Shadow Ranks NES game? I I let's played it. <laughs> I did a let's play of the Shadow Ranks NES game. I didn't do a let's play of the Mega Drive one though yet. So yeah. They were doing a mod of this game as a remake of that one. It sounded amazing. That sounds really cool. I kind of like the uh, idea behind the uh, SNES game one. That was pretty cool. Good game, good game. Not in the slightest. Since you've just moved here, I have some advice. If you haven't guessed already, he's got fingers and a lot of pies. I've seen what happens when he doesn't approve, and he doesn't approve of something, or someone or something. Pity me if off can't be worth it. And at least, very least, you won't be able to get good coffee in this town again. She <laughs> grins cheekily. So what's the story between you and Altuk? Aww, he likes it. She grins and winks less seriously at you. Did I hear yet? So like in the near future. I p could be in the far distant future of the year 2500 or so. I don't know. <laughs> I I never played the Mega Drive version. I watched Grimace play them, and they seem interesting, but I don't know. Oh, surely you've guessed. You're not serious. <laughs> I can't pull a fast one on you, can I? <laughs> well, I will tell you the real story sometime. How about that? Right now, I, don't, I have some errands to run. Come over sometime, and we can chat over hookah or something, huh? Okay. Yeah, right after the Plane Safe Torment, I will do. <laughs> the other game. I'll join on. Uh, if you're buying, I'm selling. Also, very want. Mind Wipe. Air Barrier. Fog Weapons. Acid Bolt. Outfits. Only Mage Spells. Wait. Some fetishes, G casting. I kinda miss my troll. He was pretty cool. Going up in the face of the enemy like hoo ha hoo ha hoo and then everyone was dead. That was awesome. Weapons here. I don't use any weapons, so that's not really helpful. Is there some more specialized shaman's shop? Yeah, the sudden heat spike yesterday was like, holy fuck, I don't feel so good. <laughs> Der Weinkeller. Let's go to the Weinkeller. Lucky Strike. A young woman stands at the bar, smoking a cigarette. You've seen her face before. Lucky Strike, one of the mercenaries from Monica's Falls. A plume of blue-gray smoke spills from the corner of her mouth as she turns her attention to you. Ooh, interesting. Hey. The distinctive circuit pattern tattoos that line her face shimmer and pulse with light. You need something? I don't believe that we've met. I'm Lana away. Yeah, I know who you are. She takes a drag on a cigarette. How are you holding up, champ? I heard what happened to your boss. <sighs> she wasn't just my boss, she was a friend. She smirks and lets the smoke escape from the corner of her mouth. Yeah, well, sorry for your loss and all that. A lot of people are still torn up about it. So, you need something? I just don't stand up there staring. 
Why did you bring up Monica? Did you know her? I met her a couple of times. Seemed nice enough. She takes another drag on her cigarette. But I mostly knew her by reputation. You can't live in the Diskies without hearing about the Queen of the Kreuzbazaar. Can't say that I was a fan. Well, yeah, Monica didn't control the Kreuzbazaar. Didn't she? She locks eyes with you. Then why did the gig... Then, bleh, then why did the place start falling apart the second that she got geeked? She takes another drag in the cigarette. The smoke spills out of her mouth as she speaks. Either Monica controlled the Kreuzbazaar or she had her fingers in so many pies that she might as well have. Comes out the same thing either way. Lucky Strike taps out her cigarette and leans towards your predatory grin on her face. You and your friends, you followed Monica too. Obeyed her orders without question, right? She was our team leader, of course we'll listen to her. I've got a news flash for you, friend. Here in Berlin, teams don't have leaders. The very idea of a team leader once countered to the spirit of this place. For such a rabid anarchist, your friend seemed awfully comfortable being in power. Kind of a contradiction in terms, don't you think? No, I don't. And I don't think that you know a damn thing about who Monica really was. Fair enough. You're probably right. I didn't know her like you do. I'm sure that she was a lovely person. All I really know is that your friend's death left a power vacuum and that a Kreuzbazaar is less stable because of it. Interesting. Yeah, like Zelt says, Monica was the Jesus of Kreuzbazaar. <laughs> Nothing here. Nothing there. Okay. Blitz looks up at your approach. The table beside him is littered with cigarette butts <clears throat> and a data check cable dangles from a portable tower demo set up by his side. Hey, Chief, do you need something? Just checking in. You're doing all what? His smile widens. Great, Chief. I'm doing just great. It's really nice to be able to wind down and relax for a change. No more worrying about this ganger or that ganger sneaking behind me and slipping a knife between my whips. He slaps the table with the grin. It's a good change, Chief. You've got to say. No one is ever really safe. Not when gangs are involved. Don't let your guard down. Glad to hear it. We're happy to have you on the team. Of course you are. What's there to be happy about? Not that you all settled in. I've got some questions for you. I suppose, but I'll try to keep it short, okay, Chief? I've got things to do. How long were you in Drogenkipper? I ended up there after the Anarchist Revolution of 39. I was just a kid back then, too young to realize how good I was. Too much money I could have made working the shadows. He shakes his head, a wistful expression on his face. And so, being young and dumb, I fell in with the gang crowd, and that was that. I'll have to get back to what you were doing. Thanks. Care, Chief. Nur für Mitarbeiter. Oh, Dante. You look down to see a pair of bright eyes set into a scruffy face looking back at you. Dante, Monica's old dog. Looking down into his huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. Play that. <laughs> On some instinctive level, he must know that his master's gone. Dante lets out a small whine, then rubs his head against your leg. Pet him. Woof! Alien put that predator with smart leg. Yeah, let's, let's equip Dante with a trans drone repair kit. That sounds like a good idea. 
Let's dash the grenade for now. Iger turns to face you. There's a pained look on her face. Look, I owe you an apology. I'm listening. When Monica died, I was beast. That probably doesn't come as a huge surprise. But I took that anger out on you. And I shouldn't have. Seeing Winter's body like that was enough to convince me. You couldn't have done anything to help Monica, and I couldn't have either. We are dealing with something new. Monica was a good friend of mine. Her death hurt. I got carried away, and I said some things that I shouldn't have. I want to apologize for that. Her body relaxes, she begins to turn away. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. There's a few things that I want to say. She stops and turns back to face you. You can see the, very, the weariness behind her eyes. Go ahead. Nobody's stopping you. You're going to regret it. You're a valued member of this team, Iger. We need to know more than ever. I'm glad that you're on my side. She raises her hand to stop you. The expression on her face has gone from cautious to annoyed. Cut the bullshit, fearless leaders. I don't respond well to flattery. Forget it then. Yeah, I will. She shakes her head in disgust. You should go. I got prep work to do for our next one. You've got more important things to do than watch me pack my gear. She really doesn't like being flattered. Like, really? Hi, Chloe. Hole. Chloe's expression remains distant, but the lips curl upward in the hint of a smile. A line away. Need something? You kind of started running the shadows much more than five years ago. Tops. So what's with the vintage chrome? I set a story that interested in telling out of context. If you really want to get into it, we're going to need to go back. Way back. She stares at you with her cold dead eyes. I'm not sure that you want to do that. You said you will give me answers when we talk about your past, so let's talk about it. Why do you care? There's no hostility in her voice. If anything, she sounds suspicious. Because I'm lead of this team, I need to know as much as I can about the runners who are working with me. She pauses for a moment, considering. Then she nods. Alright, fine, we can talk. But we're doing it on my terms. There's a long story, away. Long and ugly and cruel. Are you sure that you want to hear this? Please. Alright. I'm going to start at the beginning. Not for you, for me. I guess that it might help me to say all of this out loud. She takes a deep breath and slowly releases it. When she speaks, her voice comes out in a cool monotone. My family lived in Stuttgart. Oh! Well, right about the corner. It was a nice enough place, I suppose. My parents worked as wage slaves for IFMU. My mom was a good person. Once upon a time, my father was a decent person as well. That's what mom always told me, but I never knew him that way. She pauses for a long moment. When she begins speaking again, some of the ice has fallen away from her voice. For the first time since you met her, Glory sounds alive. The dad that I knew was an old, damaged Euro war vet who turned two hardline religion to make sense out of to make sense of the world. In Stuttgart that meant either the Ritter Christi or the fascist cousins the Kreuzritters. My father chose the latter pass. I still remember hiding in my room when my father had his Kreuzritter brothers over for prayer group. They would drink and get rowdy, then spend an hour or two riling themselves up with talks about heretics and the devil's work. I need to give you the German accent. Then they... I should do this by just reading. I have a German accent. <laughs> then they would go to find the poor elf or dwarf, stomp the living shit out of him, and draw him in the necker. Meanwhile, I would be holed up at home with mom, who would commemorate the event by drinking a bottle of wine and crying herself to sleep. <sighs> 
just elves and dwarves? I, I would assume that a mage or an orc would make a more tempting target. I'm sorry, Glory. No charge would have to go up. I want that. Thanks, Alanaway. This is difficult for me. Thank you for making it easier. Anyway, aside from the fact that my dad and his buddies were a bunch of murderous assholes, life was pretty normal. I went to school, made friends, hung out with my mom, kid stuff. Then I turned 14 and everything went to shit. Glory pauses and swallows hard. Ever so slightly her cheeks flush red. Suddenly she looks self-conscious as if she just snapped out of her trance. As quickly as it came, the flush of emotion disappears. Her voice forces over. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Having this stuff out is clearly helping you to work through it. You don't need to say anything they don't want to, but if you ever want to talk, you know where to find me. Thank you for your understanding. Globy stares at you through cold dead eyes. Now let's get back to the job at hand, shall we? Cliffhanger! We need the German accent. Hey boss, what can I do for you? How are you holding up? You seem to take Monica's death harder than the others did. Dietrich shakes his head, a wistful expression on his face. Uh, not, no harder, but I'm less buttoned up than the others are. Igor will never let herself show any weakness in glory. Well, she's too full of chrome to feel much of anything. He shrugs me. I don't give a damn. I spent too much of my life putting on a show for others already. What do you mean by that? I used to front a punk band way back when. Believe it or not, I spent a pretty good chunk of my life on stage. Whenever we weren't playing, I was living up to our fans' expectations, sporting off, getting into fights, getting drunk, getting laid. Not a bad life, all since considered. Wait a second, you can sing? We got him with a critical eye. I was the frontman for punk band, boss. Fuck no, I can't sing. But I was half better of writing up a quote. How was the band called? Maybe I've heard of it. But I doubt it, boss. We never really got any airplay. Spit it out, old man. Alright, boss, if you insist. The band was called Messerkampf. Spelled just like it sounds, in big capital letters with an exclamation point. We weren't a big act or anything. We sold a few records here and there, toured around Europe. <laughs> Knife fight. <laughs> We had a decent following in England and we holed up in London from 31 to 36. Spent most of our time slamming it around the East End and picked up enough cockney to irritate the folks back home. He shakes his head. Truth be told, that whole chapter of my life is a bit of a blur. We didn't do it for the fans or the fame and we sure as shit didn't care about money. All that mattered to us was staying young and drunk and angry. He takes a moment to examine his gnarled hands, a sad smile on his face. We managed a second too. Good God, where has the time gone? Dirty shakes himself from his reverie and looks back up at you. That familiar, easy grin returns to his face. Well, anyway, boss, everything ends eventually, and I washed my hands of all of this years ago, so let's change the subject if you don't mind. How did you go from fronting a band to running the shadows? It wasn't a big leap, as you would think. I already had a healthy sus disrespect for authority, and I had the magic to back it up. One nice thing about shamanism, as long as you keep your idol happy, it doesn't matter what else you do. The Dragon Slayer chose me to be his servant, and as long as I was scrapping with something bigger than me, he didn't much care whether I did it on stage or in the shadows. Tell me about the Dragon Slayer. Not much to tell. He chose me when I was just a kid. I could always feel him in my heart, goading me to laugh louder, hit harder, and get rowdier than the rest. Of course my family didn't understand, but the hell with him, I thought. I knew that I was destined for greater things. And so I listened to him, and I cracked the skulls of a lot of bad people. He saw this and was pleased, and rewarded me with magic, and I used that magic to crack bigger, sicker skulls, and so on. He shrugs. It's a simple life, but a good one. So long, Dietrich. Take it easy, boss.
Amsa's expression is harder than you've seen it before. When he speaks, his voice is grim. Aiga has told me of Green Winter's death. She said that he died in the same manner as Monica did. It wasn't a pretty sight. Amsa nods gravely. I know that you and Aiga had had your differences. I will tell you that she was badly shaken by the sight of Winter's body. She also mentioned you found something in Winter's safe, a package full of very old discs. May I see them? Of course. Good God! Gingerly, Amsa lifts the disc from the bundle and holds it up to the light. Slowly, he begins to turn it in his hand, causing a rainbow pattern to shimmer across its surface. I haven't seen one of these since I was a boy. This is a DVD RV, a data storage medium from the mid 2000s. I'm amazed that Winters was able to find a device that could play it. Do you know how you can read these things? <clears throat> he puts on the DVD in his hands and quickly inspects the authors. The first disc that I looked at might be readable. The authors are damaged, some severely so. I have my thoughts about them. For now, let's concentrate on the undamaged disc. There's a little shop outside the data haven. Talk to the proprietor Malit Holie. She might be able to help. Tell her to put the costs on the device on my account. I'm on it. Chainsaw hands and chrome scalps, that's what's interesting. <clears throat> Welcome back, what can I do for you? I uh, acquired this drone, can you get it up and running again? Yeah, probably. It might take a bit of doing, though. I love working with these old corp drones. Can't make you any guarantees, but either way, it's on the house. I'll leave it in your hands. I'll start with it right now. I'll see you later. There was something else. I'm looking for something that can play back a DVD RV. Really? That is old tech. Very old. In fact, just a moment. I will go look. She turns to rummage through a bin of obsolete components at the back of her stall. Ah, yes, here we are. The dwarf wrestles a mid-sized flat-screen display out of the bin. This display has old enough hookups to connect to a DVD player. RCA, you know. Vintage. The player itself, though, this I do not have. You may wish to try your luck down at the junkyard. There's a scavenger there, a primitive man with a crude disposition. If anyone here in the Kreuzpasser can help you find your DVD player, he can. But he will almost hurt the attempt to overcharge you for it. She takes a deep breath and smiles at you. But you're not here for gossip. Shall we conclude our business? I could give you the display for, say, 200 new one? Paul Amstel said to charge it to this account. Ah, very well. I will have it packaged up and delivered to Amstel straight away. Best of luck, find your DVD reader. Wish you well. Thanks a lot. Look for the DVD player at the junkyard. Schrotti. <laughs> A stalled old man looks up from whatever old tech he's tinkering with no to squint at use with thick old fashioned glasses. He pushes them up with an old stained finger as he straightens up to nod at you. He speaks with a gruff but well-meaning tone, heavily accented with German tonality. Guten Tag! What can I do for ya? Molly tells me you are the man to speak to about DVDs. That little shrew sent him away, huh? Shorty smile broadens. Will wonders never cease? Well, introductions are in order, I suppose. Schrotti Buchmann, at your service. The old man raises a grimy hand in salute. Need something salvaged? Some old components? Vielleicht? I'm indeed your man. Wonderful. How about a DVD player? Well, let's see. I think I've got something that will work for ya. Shrotty rummages through the junk heaped in the table behind him. A few seconds later, he snatches a battered plastic lozenge shaped from the pile. 
Ah, here we go. An old Korean player that I dug up last week. 2010 model, a real beauty. Shorty small boards and it gives you a conspiratorial wink. I fixed up and got a running, but without any disc to read, I've mostly been using her as paperweight. That's like what I'm you looking for. How much do you want for it? Shorty glances back at the DVD player, a rueful expression on his face. Well, I'll admit, I, I'm a little loath to part with her. There are plenty of folks out there who would really appreciate an older player such as this. And I don't know what your attentions are for it. I suppose given the time and trouble I took putting her back together, I don't would be willing to part with her for, I would say... Shorty's eyes start over your gear, a calculated expression on his face, about 500 new when? That's ridiculous, I could buy a new private player for that. Yeah, but you can't get one of those anywhere, you ain't gonna find one of these anytime soon. Well, it's not like I get offers to buy these every day, so I'll cut a deal. How's Twitter 50 sound? Half dead and you've got yourself a deal. I'm not over fond of your tone, but it's not every day I ever get asked to sell any of my projects. That will be 175 new yen, if you please. Hand over your quad stick. Here you go. Shwati gingerly picks up the ancient device from the table and presses it into your hands. The plastic is scuffed and worn and it rattles a bit when you move it. Give her some good use, okay? Mm. Uh, that was something. But apparently since I can't um, <coughs> equip my team anyways and I don't really need a lot of things. Maybe a few more spells. But I'm good. Let's just talk with these people. Samuel Beckenbauer and Lane. Ugh. The fellow stands a troll, though it is a stretch to say he is standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. If you're more Monica. Sure I know Monica. You're one of hers then? I'm with Anna Way, by the way. Good to meet you, Lanaway. My name is Alexki Lane. What's your place in the Kreuzbazaar? No place, really. Just an old relic, rusting away. There's something you should know about Monica. Something happened to her on the one. How did you know? It was written all over your face. I had a feeling, besides. Monica almost always comes around after one to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and no, here you are in her place, so she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? I'm afraid she's gone. The grizzled troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetic complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. No, that is a shame. She was a hell of a one, that one. And a good friend. I will leave you be. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there is kindness in his eyes. Guten Tag, Elf. Can I help you with something? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I take it that you want a charity of some sort? Yes, it isn't much, but we do whatever we can. Such as? Give me specifics. He clears his throat and begins to count off on his fingers. In the past several years I have established a shelter where this possessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry and a library for the people of the Kreuzbazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. A good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. <laughs> Samuel, yeah. It is, this is true. He nods to the orc at his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years have come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from all around the Kreuzbuses are working with me now. They help me man the soup line, stock the library shelves, and to do all the hundreds of other little things that a community organization needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here is value. <coughs> they are my inspiration to continue forward. She beams at the compliment. From her body language, it's clear that she idolizes Beckenbauer. 
Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. <laughs> Fifteen assorted orcs and trolls? Does that mean that other races aren't welcome within your organization? That's taking a rather narrow view of what we do. Yes, it is true that my assistants are all members of the goblinoid races, but it is also true that before they accepted my help, there were thieves, gangers, and deadbeats. This is not because they were bad people. This is because of those with, of us with goblin or traits are feared, mistreated and denied gainful employment by a society that hates us. I hire only goblinoids because mainstream human society has created a need for me to hire only goblinoids. The orcs and trolls of the Kreuzbasser deserve a workplace where they will be treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our service is available to all. We wouldn't turn a desperate person away, regardless of that person's meta time. Even humans, the most privileged of all races, are welcome at our door. Isn't that what's most important? <laughs> well, she is nicer than most SJWs, I can tell you guys that. Even humans are allowed. I will reserve judgment. judgment. You are helping people and that's what's important. Good of you to understand. Now is there something else that you would like to talk about? I would like to talk about your organization. Are you accepting donations? Uh, yes, there is a Beckenbauer. I think he's the... Doesn't he own the Bavaria club? I don't know. But yeah, something with German football and back and <laughs> Yes, of course. We are actually desperate for them. Truth be told, people seem more intent on taking care of themselves than they are in providing for the less fortunate. Of course, these concepts are not unrelated. As poverty rates increase, so does the crime rate. Assisting the needy increases the quality of life for all. In any event, our shelter has, has some basic needs that desperately need to be filled. The walls of the shelter are not insulated and your blankets would go a long way toward keeping our guests healthy and comfortable. <coughs> Ideally, we'd like to purchase some spare heaters as well. With 250 new and we could make the purchase. Whatever you could spare would be most appreciated. Yeah, just take what you need. I've got you covered. Jammer's eyes widened. This is incredibly generous. Thank you, meine Freundin. What a big deal, Sam. The good was it. With this donation, we have reached our first goal. Thank you so much for your kind assistance. I will put your contribution to work stocking the shelter with blankets and heaters. Not a problem. Let's talk about something else. I'm just passing by. I mean, I have enough. Money. Ooh, I have 11 karma. That's something I should actually spend, you know. <laughs> Shouldn't have signed. <laughs> so, I want to increase. Can someone. S Ooh, two spirits from the same summoning spirit point. Increase spellbook slot, if not yet unlocked. That maximum for twelves. I could get a new etiquette. Huh. Can I equip the fire barrier? The etiquette so far have kinda helped us, so I guess I will increase my charisma at least once. What the fuck is with a dog outside? And maybe I increase my body a bit. I can't increase my body a bit. I guess I will save the rest. So much corruption at football. That's true. When there's money, there's most likely corruption. So, we turn to Paul with the goods. <clears throat> I 
It seems that Amsel has assembled a team in your absence. They stand in a group around the old display that you had Mali to deliver. On their faces you can see excitement and apprehension, curiosity and dread. And on the way, have you procured a DVD reader? I have it, it's right here. Good, this should only take a moment. Amsel disappears behind the ancient display. After a few minutes of fiddling with its battered inputs, he appears. A satisfied look on his face. Everything appears to be functional. The disc should be ready to play. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Start the damn thing already. I don't know why I went to the trouble of fetching everything. Let her do the honors. I'm still steps back, clearing a path for you to access the antique machine. I will most likely break it or so. Watch DVDs! Some porn. A soft, whirring sound fills the air as the ancient DVD player spins the disc up to speed. The scratched LCD display comes to life and a menu fills the screen. Play track 1. The screen goes black and a cheerful dig digital chiming sound spills out the display speakers. A crackle of static fills the air, coupled with a shrill electronic whine. After a few moments the display goes live and a disheveled looking man appears on the screen. His eyes glitter with excitement. The timestamp on the screen is 2034-0915. Adrian Vauclair. Hermie, I think we found her. After all this time, Feuerschwinge. I knew that she wasn't dead. His speech is jittery. You can hear the urgency in his voice. She survived the Dragonfall, just as I've always said. I knew it, and I was white. The screen explodes into static and the electronic wind in the background sharpens into a needle like pulls of high pitch sound. Somewhere in the background Dental lets out a low whimper. The screen clears and the excited face is closer to the screen than it was before. The words spill out of him in a breezeless tide. Taking a team into the SOX to retrieve her. The duration be damned. We will take appropriate precautions. Of course, but we must go. Hear me. I think that the body may be nearby as well. Somehow, it, she, has survived for all of this time. The screen explodes in the static again and clears. The figure flickers across the screen. May not be back for some time. Look after mom, okay? I worry about her. And hear me, stay safe out there. I know that things are heating up in Berlin, and I know of you. Student protest, civil uprising, you'll be in the middle of all of it, I'm sure. Just stay safe, alright? I will do my best to do the same. I don't know what's going to happen when I step into SOX, but I do know one thing. If the fire wing is still in a danger, I will put an end to her, once and for all. Play track 2. The screen goes black for a moment and a figure appears on the screen. Your late client, Green Winters. His elbow is planted on the table that he is seated at, and his chin rests on his palm. The other hand is wrapped around a bottle of cheap whiskey. At the timestamp on the video reads 2053-1225. Found the message Adrian left me all those years ago. Got it cleaned up as best I could. Strange hearing his voice again. He pauses to take a long pull on the bottle. It's good to hear him. Even if he did insist on in calling me Hermie. Dr. Adrian Vaucler, the hero of the people, the dragon slayer. My brother. He grimaces and rubs his eyes. Hard to believe it's been almost 20 years. SOX, northern parts of Germany and the seas between it and Norway are heavily radiated. That sounds fun. Alright. So I'm gonna start recording these DVDs again. For me, for Adrian, for whoever might wind up watching them. Every time I do this, it winds up feeling like a waste of time, but I keep doing it anyway. On the off chance that I will find something important. If I stumble onto the clue that leads me to my brother, I know that I'm gonna wait, want it on film. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now, after all. No sense in quitting now. Christ, 20 years. All this time and still no leads, even with all of my contacts and my resources. He takes a long, not a long swallow of cheap liquor. Even with my legendary bullheadedness, I've made no progress at all. I haven't turned up a single goddamn thing. Wanna hear something funny? The closest I've gotten to clue, a clue was a rumor. Apparently a team emerged from the SOX a while back. Nobody's clear on the date, but, and get this, he leans into the camera and gives a conspirational wink. Supposedly they vanished without a trace. Yeah. 
He appends the bottle, drains it, slams it back down to the table. His eyes are whimmed with sweat. Not much of a rumor, considering I already know that you're gone, big brother. I live with that every day. It's like grinding from the DVD tray and Green Winter's image appears on the screen. There's an eager look on his face. The times from the video reads 2054 1 10 12. Stumble upon this archival footage of Fire showing his original attack. Months before the dragon fall. Easy to forget how devastating it was. Adrian saved a lot of people by bringing her down. I've got the footage all queued up to play. Starting it now. Additional comments to follow. The slow wheel of the DVD player shifts to a high-pitched whine. A distorted wave of image bloom into being on the screen. A timestamp on the upper right corner of the screen marks the date. July 6, 2012. It's difficult to make out what you are seeing at first. The screen is dark and smoky. And the telltale flashes of emergency vehicles like flicker on the periphery of the screen. The camera pushes in and you can make out two figures standing in a wood landscape. All at once the sound cuts in. Report. Again, for those of you just joining us, we are coming to you live from Stolberg. A few hours ago, the dragon fire swing launched an unprovoked attack on the Sleepy Hearts mountain town. And you can see the results behind me. Fire, ashes and blood. We are joined tonight by a survivor of this latest and most horrifying attack. The reporter turns to face a pale man standing behind him. Sir, I understand that you've been through a terrible ordeal. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us tonight. Survivor. The camera switches focused on a middle-aged man with a haunted look on his eyes. He stammers out a reply. Yes, of course. If you could, sir, could you please tell the people at home about your experience of the attack? It, it was horrible. Just pure, pure chaos. So many people are dead, people I knew, roasted alive or trampled to death trying to escape. My own house was burnt to the ground during the attack. My family, we, we have nothing now. You all make it through the attack though, your wife, your kids? Yeah, we all made it, thank god. We out, we rolled out the attack in a small shelter, me, my wife and our two daughters. The shelter had protected us, but the heat was just unbearable. We couldn't have stayed in there much longer than we did. How long were you holed up in there? Three, maybe four hours? I don't know. We just stayed inside until the heat died down and the screaming stopped. And what happened after that? When it was over, you know, when the air cooled down. We stepped outside. There was nothing left. Just smoldering wreckage and this dense cloud of black, oily smoke. And the stench in the air. God, that smell. It smelled like roasting meat. There's a long pause from the tortured look on his face. You can tell that the man is struggling to decide whether or not to continue speaking. Eventually he does. My girls. They, they found out what's left of the nanny outside. Her body, what was left of it, was slumped against the shelter door. I kept telling myself that I couldn't hear her pounding to get in, but that isn't true. I could. I just couldn't bring myself to open that door. I couldn't risk my family like that. N not for her. Not for anyone. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah. You heard it here. An absolutely chilling account of tonight's attack. Again, the town of Stolberg has been reduced to ash. Another victim of the fire wing. Stay with us for more up-to-the-minute reporting of Feuerschwinger's reign of terror. Green Winter's face reappears on the screen. Okay time for a new approach. Adrian's a complete dead end. That much is pretty clear by now. So we're going to do some digging on fire swing instead. Let's see where this goes. The DVD player ramps up to speed, filling the air with a shrill, whining sound. Green Winter's images appears on the screen. The time cinematic video reads 2054 1031. Well, that was a bust. Little pork was on fire swing either. He shakes his head. I don't know. It's weird. Information is there, it's just wrong. Somehow, it's too well laid out, too simple. Real life is messy and this just feels a little too neat. That's not the only thing that's nagging at me. I'm getting this tingly feeling all up and down the back of my neck again. It feels like I'm being tracked. I know Matrix hotshot like Clockwork or Schaefer, but I'm good enough to know when someone's on my scent. Gotta install some new security measures, can't be too serious. Oh! Clockwork was the one we read about in the uh, 
in this board and Schaefer, well, Monica. <clears throat> the display goes blank for a moment, then the face of Queen Winter swings onto the screen. He's seated at a computer off to his left. An enormous monitor fills the screen. His voice carries an act of panic. This time some of the video reads blah, blah, blah. Christ, I'm getting too close to something. There's a trail of bodies and there have been disappearances. Gearbox, Martian, Paraguayan, they've all disappeared within the past few years. Gearbox just went AWOL yesterday. And they were all making the same sorts of inquiries about the firewing that I've been. There are ghost stories spreading around the Decker community. Stories about Deckers disappearing and then showing up later, but Wong somehow. Scary stuff and I'm starting to think that it's true. This leans in to whisper to you. I know these stories he's talking about, Chief. Never really put much, put much stock on him. Not until now. Could these rumors be related to what's happening here? Am I being paranoid? He pauses for a moment as if seriously considering the question. Then he shakes his head and slams his fist on the table. Oh, I don't think so. Something big is happening here, and I'm right in the middle of it. Aga cuts in. That's a bit of a leap. The one thing, Tolstoy told me a story about a kill team that might be related to all of this. Apparently a tacker named Hellbore posted a theory about Feuerschwinge with a shadow on BBS about five years ago. About an hour later a millspec team showed up in meat space and cooked her entire apartment with her in it. If what Tolstoy told me was true, Hellbore li live posted the events. She described her killer, this great big orc with windcrafts. Then the whole thread disappeared, gone without a trace. Leap? Eager love? Sounds like he's right on track to me. Eiger holds a silence but concedes the point with a small nod. On the screen, Winter pauses. He looks like he's working up to something. Finally, he speaks. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This has got to be Feuerschwinge. All of it. Adrian was right about her. She's still alive and she's out of the SOX. She's covering her tracks, working the shadows, preparing to rise again. And that means that I have to find you, Adrian, for everyone's sake. Thankfully, I've got a lead. For the first time in two decades, I've got a solid goddamned lead. I've backtraced all of the Matrix notes that Hellbore was looking into, back before she got cooked. Whoever's been purging the Matrix didn't think about that, and I found that she, but she turned up. Winter steps a few keys on his keyboard and an image expand to fill the screen of his monitor, a satellite photo of a rural landscape annotated with GPS data, a set of map coordinates. So now I've got a target, a place to start digging. The half-felt manor, conveniently located on an isolated stretch of countryside, miles away from prying eyes. Matrix records indicate that some sort of data world exists beneath the state, so that's what I need to get into. And this is where we came in. <coughs> yes. If on the queue a familiar image rings under the moisture of winter's left Monica, I think I'm gonna tap Schaefer for this job. She's got the skills to bypass whatever security they are running out there and she's gullible enough to take the job in the first place. I'll feed her some line about flux state security and she'll eat it up with a spoon. I want her. I want her! On the display winter's mouse parts into broad grin. Time to put, put man, bleh, time to put plans into motion. By this time tomorrow night, I should have imp the information that I need. And on the off chance that Schaefer gets taken out, well, that will tell me something too. Can't make an omelet of all that. Until then, play track six. When you play the sixth track, a small vi video window appears. You recognize the scene in the window. You're looking at the tethered drapes of nicotine-stained wallpaper of. Winter's Hotel room at that castle house. The time of the video reads 2054-1110. There's a blur of motion and the haggard form of Green Winter slumbers into frame. Suspicions confirmed. Schaefer's dead. Christ. Winter's reaches a shaking hand off camera. A moment later he returns clutching a cheap plastic drinking glass. He gloops something down, wipes his mouth with the back of his hand and takes a deep breath. Okay, 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 back down, slow down, start from the beginning. Winters closes his eyes and makes visible effort 
to calm himself. When he speaks again, his voice is steady. Got a call from my contact in the Kreuzbazaar. Schaefer killed on their sta state one. Made with security at the state cooked a brain. Considering Schaefer's skill and experience, on site I see must have been extreme, even by Berlin standards. Security of that kind costs money, real money. Given the evidence uncovered so far, corporate involvement unlikely, the connection to the firing is too strong. So let's come right out and say it. The dragon is what we are dealing with here, and the smart money says that she's coming for me next. The reading simulator much. Not a dialogue, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more fun than Avalon or Avalon ever could be. <laughs> But yeah, that's one of the reasons why I won't play Planescape Torment, because Planescape Torment is even more reading. More boring reading, to be honest, because this is a so far interesting story. Anyone says that she's coming for me next. Well, I won't go down without a fight. I've still got my contacts, still got my connections, and the flux state can be a hell of a weapon for the man who knows how to manipulate it. Time for me to make my play. Ghost stories or no, missing deckers or no, I've got to check into the matrix and start pulling strings. The countermeasures that I installed earlier should be more than enough to keep me safe for the 20 minutes I'll be in there. Winter drains the rest of the glass and tosses it back over his shoulder. A moment later you hear the dull clattering sound of hard plastic and anonium. Schaefer's death was tragic. She was a staunch supporter of the F-state, but still, all things considered, Better her than me. He plugs the cable into his head and then the screen cuts to static. I check the DVD. <clears throat> As your finger nears the eject button, a black screen cuts in over the static. A moment later, Green Winter's haggard face appears. If you're watching this and I guess that they caught up to me, they will be after you too now. Fritz whispers into you again, more harshly this time. What the hell is this? Why didn't you warn me about this before I came here? Hey everybody, Blitz is scared. Not now, Blitz. Whoever you are, whatever you think you are after, you need to find Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Not because he's my brother, because the fire swing is rising again. He's the only one who can stop her. You've seen what happens to people who get too close to this. I'm dead and dozens of authors have died. You will be next unless you can find Adrian. The screen cuts back to static. The message is over. The DVD translates out of the reader. Well, fun. The room goes quiet as everyone struggles to process what you've just seen on the DVD. Finally, Dietrich breaks the silence. A dragon! Son of a bitch. Green Winter sent us against a dragon. The fire wing. Amsel's voice is thick with dread. She lives. <laughs> I'm really starting to regret the fact that I didn't just stay at the hotel. I <laughs> ignores him. Wait a second. We don't know for certain. Dietrich lays her hand on Iger's shoulder. The evidence seemed pretty convincing to me, love. I'll even take it a step further. I think the secret facility that we stumbled into was a lair. The room falls silent. Iger and Glory exchange, exchange glances. After a moment, Dietrich continues. Just think about it. The decker that Winters got those coordinates from was posting about Feuerschwinge. Then she was killed by that same orcish bastard that attacked us after Monica died. That's a direct link between the dragon, the scarred orc, and the half felt manor. And then Winters was killed by the same thing that killed Monica. Exactly. My gut tells me that the dragon is down there. Alana Way. Some place far beneath the surface. I think that we knocked on the door to her lair without even knowing it. And I think that, given what we've seen, the dragon will do whatever it takes to keep us quiet about it. Okay. Going on the assumption that there is a dragon, and that she will come after us. What do you propose that we do about it? I say keep things simple. We head back there, kicked in the door, killed the dragon, problem solved. 
I'll tell you what we are going to do. We are going to follow Winter's advice. We are going to find War Claire. Yes, Elena is right. Finding Dr. War Claire should be our priority. If we are going up against a dragon, we need to find ourselves a dragon slayer. Winter spent 20 years searching for War Claire and it got him nowhere. How do you propose that we find him? With the help of an information broker. Let me guess, back to the coffee shop? For this? No. While Herr Burkagazi is very capable, a task of this magnitude is beyond him. We need to make contact with the premier information broker in Berlin. We need to talk to Alice. This scoffed at Elmsel. Alice? Best of luck. And I hope that you're rich. Elmsel raises an eyebrow. For this? Rich enough. Even if only just. Who is this Alice? A most prominent figure in Berlin's shadow community. Ex Shockwellenreiter. She provides information retrieval service for the F state. Emsel turns to the computer console behind him and runs his finger over a virtual keyboard. The machine begins to hum. If Winters was right, if Oclair is still alive, she can help us find him. The console spits out a stick of black plastic. Emsel puts it and hands it to you. Here! Your key to speak with Alice. A quad stick? Emsel nods. And they call it Quetzal, yes. 10,000 New Yen. Alice will not show her face for less. This represents the last of her personal savings, I don't know why. Make this meeting count. 10,000 New Yen? Just to talk to her? I'm so not a standard fee. Alice is in a position to ask it, and we are in no position to argue. Just like I said, why doesn't anyone listen to me? Where do I need to go? Take the U-Bahn to the Altstadt Spandau. There you will find a connecting tube that the locals refer to as the rabbit hole. You will find a method of contacting Alice there. Don't call it for that in front of her, though. Word on the street is that she hates it. Please hurry. While you are out, I will work on acquiring new contracts for the team. Alice is the best there is at what she does, and her services carry a price tag to match. Hey, we need money. Uh, seven unread messages. Shadow on BPS post pay data for sale. Nothing there. Anything keyboard? Where to find Elf? Klein screwed me. Benno is a fraud. I broke my first rule. Always get full payment up front. Left me hanging for 50% of the cash after I completed the job. I'm sure he'll have changed his name by the time this posting goes up. Male, elf, brown hair, gold eyes, look to be in his mid-30s. Be careful who you work for out there. Never thought I would see you admit a mistake on here. Thanks for the heads up, I'll keep my eyes open. We'll forward any info I come across if you're still looking to collect from the guy. Pro shot. Send you some surveillance footage. Is this your man? <laughs> Blitz? Sure is, nice one. I'll spit the take with you if this lead pans out. Good to find there's some still some honor among one us. Good to find the elves. Is there any uh elf clubs or bars in the downtown area? I really want to meet one. They're just so beautiful. Maybe we can go dancing. Do elves like dancing? There's one on Torstrasse. Bring a bouquet of roses. Elves love a romantic. The elf clubs I know of are members only due to creepy groupies like you. Not really appealing when the guy is only after them for the shape of the ears. <clears throat> so, let's go to this one cell phone. Maybe we get a side quest there or so, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was thought we had cheap clubs. I got a bouquet of roses, that's why I got a job. An old obsolete phone booth. What is... Ah, I can take both. Okay, that's why two of these things show up. What the fuck is with this dog out there? 
whining all the time. Poor doggy. I feel almost bad for it. Oh well. Can't change it. Bring the rabbit hole. An arcade machine. Awesome. The only active concern is the very expensive U-Bahn platform is an old video arcade, arcade machine. The CRT models are set in the machine's cabinet glows invitingly. Cheerful pixelated graphics swirl and dance on the screen. Investigate the machine. At the base of the controller panel you find a cleverly hidden input port. The port is shrouded in black plastic and appears to be approximate shape of a typical quad stick. Insert Emsel's down payment into the machine. Internal motors grip the quad stick and pull it into the machine. It disappears into the port and the screen goes black. Moments later the video image fills the screen. The picture is dark and grainy. A far cry from the bright colorful sprites that previously inhabited the display. On the screen is a dim lit office. The place the, the place looks like it was pulled straight from an old detective movie. From the Venetian blinds on the windows are the great swaths of shadows that paint the walls black. Center stake sitting behind a large mahogany desk is the silhouette of an impressive looking woman in a charcoal grey suit. The tip of a cigarette glows cherry red in the shadows. She leans forward into the light and you catch your first glimpse of Alice. Her face is all hard planes and sculpted angles with high cheekbones and almond eyes. Her lips, they are blue eyes, not almond. Her lips are painted of a frigid blue, but the look in her eyes is even colder. A head of lustrous black hair is interset with flowing screams of sea and light. Alice exhales a plume of smoke, then tips a cigarette into a nearby ashtray. She fixes her eyes on you and her lips curl into a humorless smile. We are on your dime, friend. Tell me what you're looking for. I need you to find someone for me. Dr. Edwin Vauclair. She raises her eye, boy. The Dragon Slayer. Interesting. He's been missing for a long time. <clears throat> what is Almond? Um, Mandel. I guess it mostly meant the shape of her eyes, maybe. Almond shaped eyes instead of almond colored. I don't know. Yes, he has. The question is, can you find him? Speaking of corpses, Alice, I think I might know who you really are. She looks you in the eye and the smile disappears, her voice is all business. If he's out there somewhere, I'll find him for you. He could be living under some name in California Free Street, and I'll still track him down. And if he's not alive, I'll tell you where I can find his corpse. All right, I'm satisfied. Let's talk about the job. Alice steeples her fingers. All right. Here's how this is going to work. When you give me the go-ahead, I'm going to start gathering information for you. Once I've finished, you're going to bring me a credit encoded with encryption key that I will provide you. The credit will have 50,000 New Yen on it. When I get my credit, you get your information. This is the deal. Take it or leave it. Alright, you've got a deal. Okay, but remember, you say go and I go. From that point on, you are on the hook to pay my fee. No turning back, no refunds. Are we square on this? Yep, we are square. Good, I'll be in touch. The screen goes black. Moments later, the machine reboots. The colorful spice that you saw when you first approached the card cabinet return. There's nothing more to see here. Alice is gone. Well. You know, so Dante with me all the time. Oh, Dante. He likes me. I want to talk to no, Dante Blitz. Better. Woof.
I ran away. Did you make contact with Alice? Yes, I did. She accepted your payment and I ordered the search for the information we need. Very good. I can't imagine that this will be cheap. What was Alice's stated price? You're right on that count. 50,000 New Yen. He shrugs. It is about as I had expected. Thankfully, we are prepared for this. <clears throat> I have established contact with a number of new clients. You can find information on the jobs logged on your mission computer. One job's file is on there already. While you're working to earn Alice's fee, I will continue to dig for clues about Feuerschwinge. If she is in fact roosting under the Hartfield Manor, there must be some evidence of plot effect. A dragon is a large thing to hide after all. Be careful, Paul. Remember what happened to Monica? I will never forget. Don't worry, I'll run away. I'm going to conduct my research the old fashioned way, through context and deduction and careful observation. I will not check into the matrix until this entire sorry episode is finished. That's probably wise. Speaking of doing things the old fashioned way, Malid is working to recover information of of those other DVDs. It's a painstaking process, I will not be quick, but she's optimistic that she will be successful in time. Finally, I've been checking on our friend, the orc with the skin grafts. I have not anything back yet, but I'll keep you appraised that the situation develops. Sounds good, Paul. I've got to check up on those jobs. One last thing before you go, run away. Samuel Beckenbauer wanted me to pass a message to you. Do you know him? The orcs who wants the shelter across the way? Yeah, we've met. Ah oh, well, he has a job for you. He wouldn't discuss it with me, but he promised that it would prove worse of your time. I will keep it in mind. Ah, so unlocked... ...something. New objective. Raise 50,000 new yen to pay Alice. That's a... That's a, that's a lot of grenades I have to sell. <laughs> Hello again, meine Freundin. What can I do for you? I heard you wanted to talk about the job? Yes, yes I do. Thank you for coming so promptly. He takes a deep breath, slowly releases it and looks you in the eye. Tell me, what do you know about the Humanis Podi Club? They are an anti-meta-human hate group. He nods. The largest and most well-funded of its kind. The investigators of the Night of Wage and the enemy of everything that I stand for. Night of Rage? A worldwide race riot that took place in February of 2039. Thousands of innocent metahumans were attacked, beaten and killed. Women and children were correlated into warehouses for protection and then burned alive in the structures were put to the torch. This is what humanity stands for. This is the agenda that its leaders strive to advance. They will not be satisfied until all meta-humans, everywhere, are driven from the face of the earth. If you want me to go against humanists, it's gonna cost you. Yes! Your Herr Amsel informed me of your business practice. Rest assured you will be paid. No, if we may discuss the details of the job, go ahead. Yesterday I overheard one of my assistants talking on his com. He was yelling, clearly agitated. I questioned him and he confined in me. What he told me made my blood run cold. Let me guess where this is going. Human is planning something? An attack of some kind? Yes, I believe so. The Berlin chapter of Humanis has arranged to acquire a large shipment of an extremely hazardous chemical. Their leader, Volker Stahl, is a vicious ideologue. 